One time I programmed these parts out of these big stainless steel forgings. And we had to remove like 75% of the material. And I knew with so much material coming off that I needed to get my feeds and speeds dialed in just right. So the machinist running the parts didn't have to stop in the middle of the program and change the tool out and try to pick back up where he left off. So I spent a lot of time specking out the right tools and calculating the speeds and feeds specifically for that material. After we ran the first part or two, we got a good feel of where we were at on tool life. So I started making adjustments to the speeds and feeds to get the tool life up to where we felt like they needed to be because we had hundreds of these parts to make. We spent a few days dialing in everything and refining the process on day shift only before we turned it loose and started running on first and second shift. Everything was going great. After a few days of running on two shifts, my boss came to me and said, you need to go to that machine and figure out what is wrong with that part. We're going through end mills like crazy. I was confused because things were running so great before when we were just running on day shift. I went over to the machine and asked the day shift machinist what the problem was. He told me he didn't have a problem, that everything was running great for him, but night shift was breaking a lot of end mills. We couldn't understand why one shift didn't have problems, but the other did. So I stayed late until the shift changed. When I went over to the machine, I found that the second shift machinist was running the end mill at like 30% on the feed rate and 70% on the spindle speed. He claimed it looked too fast with my feeds and speeds. So he slowed it down based on some RPM and inches per minute that they ran one time in the past. But the problem here is that I wasn't using the same end mill they used in the past and I wasn't using the same roughing method. A lot of people tend to only pay attention to the RPM and inches per minute they see at the control. But actually the RPM and inches per minute values are irrelevant. And here's why I say that. RPM and inches per minute are relative and not absolute values. 12,000 RPMs on a 130 second or a one millimeter end mill would be considered a little slow, but 12,000 RPM on a six inch or 150 millimeter face mill would be unrealistically fast, right? Same goes for inches per minute. 100 inches per minute while taking a 50% step over is going to give you a much different chip thickness than it would if you used the same feed rate at a 10% step over. There's also other factors that come into play with inches per minute as well, such as the number of flutes the tool has. So the values you see in the machine mean nothing without knowing and understanding the full details of the machining strategy you're performing. What really matters is surface footage and feed per tooth. Now I know there's a lot of people that can't wait to get in the comments and say, yeah, dude, this is obvious. But I've actually been in a couple shops where they didn't even know what I was talking about when I mentioned surface footage or feed per tooth. And I honestly can't tell you how many times I have seen people load a program in a machine and start scanning through it, looking at what is programmed for the RPM and feed rate and immediately start changing the values based on something they used in their past. Completely not taking into account the fact that they may be using a different tool with a different number of flutes or what radial depth of cut the tool is taking. And then most of the time the tool would break down too fast or start chattering because it doesn't have enough load on the tool. The key takeaway here is don't get caught up on just looking at the RPM and inches per minute because these values alone are not enough information to decide if they are correct for the application you're performing. Instead, keep in mind the surface footage because this value can be used for any diameter tool you wish to use. And instead of inches per minute, keep in mind the feed per tooth and the chip thickness because these will change depending on the depth of cut or the number of flutes your tool has. And all these coupled together will help you better understand all of the factors coming into play so you can better optimize your program and gain maximum efficiency. Hey y'all, thanks for watching. If you found what you heard today useful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to help support free education. See y'all next time.